All right, guys, welcome back to the Sports of them. So we have a very special guest today, my good friend, Mr. Shima Love, sports analyst, presenter, and all that jazz. So Shima, how are you doing? I'm not too bad at all. Man. Good, good, good. So I hope you're keeping safe in this COVID-19 situation. I mean, no football, no sports at all, given the fact that lives are more important. So with that being said, we just have a few topics that I want to go through. I mean, I know you're a die-hearted Man United fan, so where else to, to start or whatever, given the situation? So, number one, how would you say the season has gone so far as a United fan from that perspective? Uh, I think so far it has been a mixture of good and bad. Um, and I want to break it down into probably three phases because really and truly, if you look on the first four or five games where it seemed as if Sosha knew his best 11 or had settled on an 11 which he thought was um, the best he could compile based on what he has at his disposal. Mm -hmm. Um, They were playing extremely well. Uh, Paul Paul Pogba was involved a lot and they were getting in in behind the opposition and creating a, a lot of chances and they were getting a lot, a lot of penalties. Mm. Once you see a team getting a lot of penalties, you know they're getting into the box. They're, they're getting into the most dangerous of areas where the opposition feels threatened. And so I thought during the first five games, I, 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 based on that alone, I think that the team, if they stay healthy, was actually good enough for a top four finish. All right. Um, but then you have the second phase where the injuries start to come in. I mean, Paul Pogba basically non-existent after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wan-Bissaka was out for about a month. Luke Shaw for two months. Uh, Eric Bailly wasn't there as well. So, and, and yeah, you I have... remember uh, as well that Martial was out for about 10 games. Exactly. So, I mean, and the squad was already thin. Correct. And for you to lose five, six starting players, it was really a massive blow. And um, what I like about how he managed that situation is that he never found, he never tried to make an excuse. You know, he worked, he worked with what he has, always saying, look, we are going to do well, we can improve, we can get better. And during that time, in particularly, I was impressed with Daniel James. I mean, for a young boy coming into the Premier League, um, you know, 21 years old, coming to Old Trafford, you know, you're, you're in front 75,000 every week. Yeah. That's absolutely frightening. But he showed great maturity. And, and what I like about him is that he's very honest. He works really hard for the team, both sides of the ball. And at times, he would create a lot of chances. I mean, I think he had about four or five assists to Marcus Rashford. Uh, had a brilliant game against Liverpool where he supplied uh, Rashford with the assist. Mm-hmm. So you had Rashford stepping up as well. Um, and, and of course, the emergence of young Brandon Williams you know, um, look really comfortable at home on the left side, given that he's, you know, predominantly right-footed. So in terms of that phase, uh, Marcus Rashford, the emergence of, of, of Brandon Williams, and also the leadership of Harry Maguire really came through. You could see where he was now stepping up, taking command, you know, trying to keep the boys grounded, keep them positive, despite the, 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 the tough runner results. You know, and then of course you have Mason Greenwood coming in slowly, and you know score. And he's always been scoring goals. And I know many people took it for granted when um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said that he's a natural goal scorer. You can see. It. I mean, as soon as he gets in the run at penalty area and he shoots, he always hits the target. And as a number nine, as an attacking player, if if you have that natural quality to always hit the target, you'll always be a threat. So I mean. Despite all the difficult moments um, with, 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 with injuries, you had you know two young players emerging, and then of course you have um, young Daniel James and Marcus Rashford, who is on his most prolific um, season so far. Uh, and of course, after January, when Bruno Fernandez came in, things just seemed to fall into place because you look at what he brings: leadership, creativity. And at times, there are times doing games when you want a player to just, you know, demand the football and just be calm, be composed. 
and direct everything. And that's what, what he has done because he has that personality, the confidence to get on the ball, to create chances. He will take those risks, right? Yes, he gives away the ball a lot, but that's because he's trying to create something. And I think um, that is what United were missing. And that is what Paul Pogba should have been doing, you know, taking command of games, being a leader on the pitch. You know, don't forget, forget about all this stuff off the pitch. I mean, on the pitch, you have to produce. And I think that's what um, Bruno Fernandes has done. So I think from January, they've been unbeaten. They're on a, you know, a, a, a good momentum. And then you're thinking, you know, Pogba should return. Rashford should return. You know, they can really kick on. And then, of course, you know, the COVID-19 um, disease outbreak. So <laughs> tough look for Sosha, you know. In the Premier League, Steve, we know. Um, momentum is a, a, a massive thing, and when you're on such an excellent run, and 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 you know it it it, it gets disrupted, it, it's really difficult to get that back. True, I, I totally agree. You know, I'm playing. I would say devil's advocate somewhat. I am a proponent that every coach should get them job. So this this is this will actually let me segue into something else I wanted to ask you in terms of social as a manager. Now, I am a big proponent of every manager getting them chance. From even when we gave David Moyes a chance, I don't think the club actually supported him as well. Granted, a lot of persons might say, hey, he wasn't a shiny name in terms of manager. Fine, I'll agree with that. But if you don't support the manager, then you won't actually know what they have. Supported Van Gaal, even though most persons would say, oh, he actually bored us today. Mourinho. <laughs> I never wanted Mourinho at the club because... From Mourinho came into football, meaning when everybody knew about him, I was never a Mourinho fan like that. He was box office because he made you laugh because of his antics and stuff, but he was never a United manager in my eyes. Now, that being said, I, I gave him a chance. You now, with social, I am of the, the fact that most persons say they don't see a style of play that he tries to do, etc., and all of that stuff. But me being honest, I can see it. Given the fact that he's had to chop and change, which you mentioned, the first part of the season is that you saw that once we had space, we could exploit that in a number of ways. Whether Pogba playing a through ball over the top or just using Rashford and Martial to, to link up right there and still getting around it. The, part, the place where we had problems were with like teams who, who defended in a low block. Right. Fast forward now with Bruno Fernandes. Granted, Pogba has been injured because he would have probably helped with that. So the five or so games he played, and then we didn't have him. We had to be using Andreas and Lingard to a certain extent, and they're not that kind of player. So this segues me into Solskjaer now. What do you think of Solskjaer as the man manager, as a manager in terms of tactics and all of that? Uh, in terms of... In terms of a man manager, I think he is very good. Um, if you're looking at one player in particular, that's Paul Pogba. Um, based on his performance on the pitch, I think we've seen the best from Pogba and the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Um, and that also makes you wonder, is, is Pogba um, responding to him just because he wanted Mourinho gone? Or... Do they actually have a relationship since their time during the academy? Right. And when you hear Mina Raiola, who is obviously not a fan of the club, can say certain things, then you probably know that um, you know, there is some form of relationship there. So in terms of in terms of man manager, I think he has done well. And also Pereira, Lingard, they are, you know, I think that actually they have done better than who they are. <laughs> I, think Andres Pereira. I, I don't I don't think he's the the box to box midfielder many people want to see. I actually think that playing further forward is more suitable for him. So um and of course when you look at the way he manages um a Mason Greenwood, keeping him away from the media, yeah. um keeping Donna Williams away from the media, all of that. So it tells you that he he knows how to manage these modern day players. In terms of tactics, I am not sure how much is attributed to him because it seems as if it's more like a, a team, a team strategy. 
you always see him speaking to Michael Carrick or he's speaking to, to um, Mike Phelan. So you know that um, it, it's, it's more of a, of a team, a team um, strategy. However, um, in terms of a, a playing style, this is something I search a lot for. Um, and in every game, almost 80% of the time, they try to play it from the back, even right. they're under right. you know, high pressure. Exactly. Um, and, uh, and then they want to keep the ball in midfield and they want to use width. And there's a reason Romelu Lukaku is not in his plans. And that's because Sosha likes winger forwards, people who can interchange in the final third. He, he wants people who are good technically on the ball to hold it up and, and bring others into the game. So in, in terms of the, the pace on the wit with Rashford and also, and, of, and also Daniel James, and having that centre forward who, who is very mobile, good on the ball as well, it, it tells you exactly what he wants. So um, I see the style. Um, the only time I never really saw anything was when they were without a lot of start, starting players. Which, 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 when you know he had to try to basically be getting results and patching something together. So in that regard, I still I I still believe that you know he, he has some way to go. But if he gets the players he wants and the team he wants, I think he can do really really well. All right. So we tend to agree on a number of points. Just hit. Because I, I remember a, a lot of fans say he's just a PE teacher. He doesn't know what he's doing. No, granted, when you listen to other persons who have worked under him, case in point, Erling Haaland, he has attributed a lot of his success to his days playing at Mola with Alegana Sosa. Now, if you look at the current team, you can see progress in so many players person might not really be able to admit it because you have some persons that are saying hey, the players have improved themselves. Yet, whenever the players don't improve, they say the onus is on the coach to improve or the manager to improve those players. Now, Rashford, you mentioned. Martial, you can see differences. You talked about Brandon Williams who has stepped up from the academy seamlessly. You have um, Tuan Zebe who was playing pretty well before he got injured. You have, it's as you said... Wood. I, I, Mason Greenwood is like the jewel in the, the in the crown when you think about it. He has managed him perfectly, if you ask me. He's scored at least what twelve goals so far in his debut season, and he hasn't started all of those games. He hasn't played a full ninety minutes in a lot of those games. So when you see how he's handled him in terms of not burning him out, not exposing him to much pressure and all of that, I think he's done pretty well. As you said, if he gets the right players to enact the style that he wants, I mean. No team, to me, should have only one hard and fast way to play. You need to be able to adapt and adjust depending on the opposition. Now, one of my big problems with Mourinho was Mourinho was always focused on the opposition and not on yourself and how you can hurt the opposition. Which, based on what Solskjaer had done, that is what he looks at. If you looked at Tottenham last year, and even this year when we played them, he looked at the fact that they, they use high wingers, so he plays straight, straight forwards get behind them and stuff like that. No, that segues into the third, the third um, section that I want to talk about. So for us to get where we need to be, we need a number of players. We need to get rid of some, obviously, and get better players in. Now, I made a video of a few players that I think, based on the position that I think are most needed. Granted, Luke Shaw was injured and he's come back with a vengeance. He's even able to play at left centre back in a back three if we need to. So I've shelved the, 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 the left back, given that Brandon Williams as well has also come in and per performed superbly. No, I think we need a right winger slash right forward. That position has been neglected too long. Obviously, we need a central midfielder who is able to help with the playmaking. I mean, Bruno Fernandes has come in, and it really also depends on whether Pogba stays or go. Personally, I'd like him to stay, but we don't know if he will stay or go. <laughs> so we'll need midfield reinforcements. So we need a central defensive midfielder, in, in, not in the mode like a Makale that all he does, but somebody who is able to help with playmaking. He's pretty adept at breaking the play, taking the ball off the defender, stuff like that. And a centre forward to take the pressure off of Martial and Rashford at times, and really some at the game time, so they don't overexert and burn out. Now, my, my number one choices for the right-winger position was Jaden Sancho. 
So it has been stated that that deal is close and he wants to come to Manchester United. If that happens, I'll flip. Because that kid is a generational talent. When you look at the stats, he's way ahead of all of the, the big names that you can think of who themselves were generational talents. Messi, Ronaldo, the, his numbers are way and by far way out ahead of those. For central defensive midfielder, this one is a toss-up because right now I think you have so many good one of those that whichever one you choose, I don't think you will lose or gain much. So for me, I prefer Dennis Zakaria from Munchen Gladbach because given the fact that he won't come on such a premium, such like uh, ND, uh, Ruben Neves, and those guys who are pretty good. But you know, if you're buying them from a Premier League rival, that's going to be upwards of probably 80 million pounds. <laughs> and then you now for the center forward position, I was one of the, the proponents that said, yo, Igualo will come in and do well. He'll offer something different, so he should not be scoffed at. I remember when he was at Watford, he was a pretty good player there. In a struggling Watford side or a mid-tier Watford side, he scored like 16 Premier League goals. So when you look at that and look at his output, even in China, you would have to say, okay, he might not be a big name, but he'll do what the team needs. So I also gave three alternatives for each position. I won't go through all of those, but namely the fact that they play similar and they are youth on their side, given that's what social has looked at. And the, 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 the recruitment strategy has been pretty great to me since he has come in. So that's another plus on his side. Now, what I want to know from you is what do you think of those main targets? And if you have any other that you think might fill the role, so to speak, even that we can't get those main ones? Well, uh, I think you pretty summed up, summed up pretty well um, where the, the team is training. But I want to start in goal because there's <laughs> a lot of talk with regards uh, to um, David De Gea's um, inconsistency right, right. And, and, of course, the, the, the emergence of, of Dean Henderson at Sheffield United. And, I mean, I give that kid a, a lot of credit. He yeah, worked his, his socks off. He has been on quite a few loans. But what I like about him is that he was ambitious enough to say, listen, I know I won't be able to get into the United team. I'm not going to sit around and wait. I'm going to go out and try to find a way. And I think that shows that this is a young man who wants to achieve something, who believes in himself and knows that, um, you know, if he does well elsewhere, you know, he's still contracted to the club. He can always come back. Right. But I think uh, Peter Schmeichel summed it up perfectly, where he's saying, listen, <laughs> being the number one...